Hi everyone. So in this video I want to talk about the Moore's theory or, and the modified Moore's theory, uh, which is a failure theory for brittle materials. And uh, it's a little bit more complicated than, than the, the failure theories that we've talked about so far, um, but we'll walk through it and I think it'll be all right. So it's for brittle materials and uh, before I go ahead and draw the sigma 1, sigma 2 diagram, I do want to show something else, which is the plot of a Moore circle, which kind of demonstrates what we're talking about here. So I have a sigma tau axis. And basic principle, if, if we have a material, we might say that it, it fails out here at sigma ut, and it fails back here in compression at sigma uc. And that's pretty common that the, the com ultimate compressive strength for brittle materials would be higher than the tensile strength. And if we draw the Mohr circle for these, we'd, you know, we'd have something um, like this and something like this. And then we would say that we're safe as long as our stress falls within this envelope, which encompasses uh, both of those plots. So as long as we're, we're under those ultimate tensile or compressive strengths, uh, that we'd be okay and, and kind of in between there um, is covered as well. Um, this is assuming that our, for our brittle material, the only information we have is tensile test machine um, type data that would give us uh, ultimate tensile strength or ultimate compressive strength. However, if we have available to us, um, if we have available to us the, the ultimate torsional strength, tau sub u, from a torsion test, then that gives us a little bit more information. And if we did a pure torsion test, then what we'd be finding is the ultimate torsion strength, which is gonna fall somewhere in here. And we'd inscribe that circle around the origin like that. And now we have this, this third bit of information that um, we need to take into account. So in this case, we'd inscribe the envelope around to include that circle because that also would constitute a, a failure point that we need to watch out for and I would kind of give this this shape around here now obviously my circle didn't go down far enough down here but um, the general principle is we inscribe all three uh, of those those circles in order to be considered safe now if I go ahead and and draw this on the axes that we've been looking at which is a, a sigma 1 sigma 2 axis then I can go ahead and, and mark my ultimate tensile and ultimate compression strengths. And then I'm gonna connect the dots more or less between these points. And this basic version here is what we call, uh, in this case, the simplified Morris theory, which is to say it's kind of the basic form that encompasses that, that tensile and that um, compressive component. Now, if I want to take in the, the additional bits of information and kind of really flesh out the theory or the, the full um, 
analytical expression, I would actually have curves that look something like this. And I'll see if I can draw these in. So kind of these blue dashed lines. And this would be what we call the true Moore's theory. However, very few um, calculations that we might do would actually uh, use that, that true version. It's mathematically a little bit more complicated. So instead, uh, what we might do is we can dash in a line this way and this way. And the slope of this line is sigma 1 over sigma 2 is equal to minus 1. So it's got a 45 degree angle passing down there. And then we go ahead and find where that line crosses our true Moore's theory. And oops. we draw in lines that intersect with those two points. And lines here. And we get this kind of red shape. Well, okay, black here, red in the quadrants two and four and black on this side. And that shape is what we call the modified Moore's theory, which would be what would be more commonly used. And now let's talk about how we actually encompass these areas. So if I go ahead and, and analyze what's going on, uh, I'm going to write these in terms of safety factor, um, which is basically saying the same thing as what we were doing before. But in quadrant one, it's pretty simple. I'm looking at whether or not my stress exceeds my ultimate tensile. So my safety factor in this case is sigma ut over sigma 1. So whether or not sigma 1 exceeds that ultimate tensile strength determines whether or not I fail. In quadrant 3, same general idea. Safety factor equals sigma uc over sigma 2. So same general principle, if, if sigma 2 exceeds that uh, compressive strength, then we would predict failure. In this region in the middle, uh, quadrants uh, 2 and 4, now I'm still ta I'm talking about simplified mores here, my safety factor is written 1 over safety factor is equal to sigma 1 over sigma ut minus sigma 2 over sigma uc. And that gives us a, a measure of what's inside those, those two circles. Now, if I want to get the area under the red curve on either uh, of these quadrants, which I'm going to go get a, a different color pen, then my equation ends up looking like sigma ut, sigma uc, divided by sigma uc, sigma 1, minus sigma ut times sigma 1 plus sigma 2. And so this kind of complicated looking equation is what defines the safety factor if we're in quadrants two or quadrant four under the modified Moore's theory. Um, so it's a little bit uglier, a little bit, you know, messier equation, uh, but in general, it's, it's all it's doing is trying to mathematically describe this shape that we've drawn um, using this, this 45 degree angle line uh, and where it in intersects with the true Moore's theory. Uh, and it gives us a, an approximation, right? If we, if we look at our lines, we see that, you know, the black line in uh, quadrant two, as an example, compared with the blue line is a little bit off, 
whereas the red line, which uh, has these two straight segments, is much closer to the true Morse theory than, than the simplified version. So it gives us uh, something to start with. And I'll go ahead and stop there.